I'm Chris Leon. I'm Northeast Technical Service Manager for FMC. Today I'm at a local trial in Mannheim, Pennsylvania, where I'm looking at, at different treatments to manage foliar diseases of corn. This has been a really good location because we had gray leaf spot pressure that showed up early. Then when it cooled off and we got some moisture, we had northern corn leaf light come in. Additionally, we've had pretty good pressure for tar spot here. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about tar spot because that is a new disease for our area and I think it's a lot more prevalent than people realize. So I wanted to provide some information, some background information on this new disease, some of the treatments here that are working well, and then you know how I think it's going to change our, our systems and how we manage foliar diseases in corn moving forward. So this is a slide I built just to look at the progression of a corn crop throughout the season, um, how the diseases will overlay that, and then what our current fungicide options and uh, look like. So here we have gray leaf spot, uh, very common. You know, typically you might see gray leaf spot manifesting in a field. In the late vegetative stages, if you have a highly susceptible host or if you're corn on corn or in an area that has, has fogs late into the morning, but typically we don't start seeing a whole lot of gray leaf spot until we get into the tassel and the reproductive stages of corn. And then depending on the season, it can progress and increase. Comparing that to northern corn leaf blight, because it does like cooler temperatures, you know, typically it manifests later in the season. So we may not see uh, northern corn leaf blight come in until we see our later planted corn crops and, you know, corn that's just reaching the R3 growth stage. And then obviously, you know, northern corn leaf blight can move quickly in a crop and um, within 10 days it can do some severe uh, defoliation or desiccation of the corn foliage. And then finally, you know, tar spot being new to the scene, uh, in an irrigated situation it can show up early, but I think typically it's more like a northern corn leaf blight where it shows up late and again with the right environment it can uh, progress quite rapidly. So I want to just look at, at how that overlays with what we currently do. A lot of growers will use a V fungicide, so they something they can tank mix with a herbicide. And really, if you look at the length of residual that you can expect out of a V5, if you make that application at V5, typically it will start to, to run, out, run out around V13, so really just before you get to tassel. Uh, growers that have high clearance sprayers maybe make a V8, V10 fungicide application. And then this typically takes you into the reproductive stages, the early reproductive stages, and it may last through R1. And then we have, you know, a foliar fungicide, uh, a time that typically at that VT R1 timing. So here, you know, generally you're going to be using a, an airplane or a helicopter. And we expect, you know, with some of our premium fungicides, we can get 35 to 45 days of residual. Uh, with some of the others, you know, typically you can get about 28 days. And, you know, with that in mind, if you make a VTR1 application, you know, you're probably going to gonna have protection out through around R4. And then we launched Zywe LFR fungicide. So this is an at plant application. And as soon as the corn germinates and starts to grow, then it begins to pick up the product and translocate it upwards into the foliage. So at plant, you know, we're seeing uh, levels of flutriophol in the plant, you know, at least through R4 to provide disease protection. And then finally, we have our Zyway LFR applied at plant and then overlapping that with a foliar fungicide. So we know if we make that at plant application, we could get protection through R4. And really, you know, in the case of southern rust and tar spot, which clearly are going to come in late, you know, we could come back and, and we can really use scouting to determine when we will make that, that second foliar application. You know, we may decide that it needs to go on at VT if, if you see a little bit of disease showing up. But I think typically, you know, you're going to wind up holding off to R2, R3 uh, before you would make that, that follow-up application. And with that, I mean, that's going to give you excellent protection all the way through, through dent and black layer. So now that we've looked at some of these different timings and how we expect them to perform, let's transition to the field and look at an actual application in the field and the results here at black layer at the end of the season. So this treatment here is the untreated check. You can see that it's almost totally senesced uh, as we're right at black layer at this point in time. So this treatment is Zyway LFR fungicide. 
applied at 15.2 fluid ounce use rate. Uh, this is a two by two application, so two inches to the side of the row and then two inches deep. So the big difference here versus the untreated is just the amount of foliage, the green leaf tissue that we have starting at the ear leaf and then moving up to the top of the, the corn canopy. This treatment is five fluid ounces of Top Guard EQ applied at R1. So again, we're simulating an airplane or a helicopter application here and then comparing that to a single application of Zyway LFR up front or what Zyway LFR followed by a foliar application will look like. So this treatment is a competitive standard that we have in the trial. Uh, this is looking at 13.7 fluid ounces of Moravis Neo applied at, at R1. This treatment is 10.5 fluid ounces of Zyway LFR fungic fungicide applied at planting. And then we came back at V8 with 5 fluid ounces of Top Guard EQ. So in this scenario, we were mimicking a grower applied application where you wait to the last possible minute to, to get your spray rig into the field, but yet still be able to get over the top of the crop canopy. So this treatment is 10 and a half fluid ounces of Zyway LFR fungicide applied at planting. Then we came back at R1 to simulate an airplane or a helicopter application with the five fluid ounces of Top Guard EQ. So this is a comparison to a, to a ground application and the level of disease control and the yields that, that you might expect from, from holding off and, and going a little bit later. So finally, I'm going to leave you with some tar spot resources, places that you can go to, to learn more about tar spot. Uh, the Crop Protection Network has a great site and it will be updated as we learn more. But then also your local extension or local university, so Penn State, Michigan State, Purdue, and Ohio State places that have had tar spot for a number of years and, and been researching those are, are, are excellent places to, to go and learn more.